EJ would like to know your feeling on the offensive coordinator, defensive coordinators potentially changing. I'm down for anything that gets Miami to the success that we want and need. And if that is a change in paradigm, if that is a change in personnel, whether that be on the field or in the coaching ranks, I'm here for it. Um, at a minimum, if those guys return, those being Josh Gaddis and Kevin Steele, if we're not seeing the result and the change that we need to see four or five games in the next year, hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more. Like, I mean, look, just like Bobby Ross said when he uh, coached the Detroit Lions, you get a quick, a swift bus ticket out of town. And I mean, look, those guys have had success in their careers. We know their extensive resumes. So I'm not saying that they can't coach. I'm saying that it didn't go well last year for a variety of reasons, including some of the coaching decisions and schematic, you know, uh, deployments from both guys. I would have loved to get Phil Longo from Carolina, but he's going to work with his friend Luke Fickle at Wisconsin as of a couple hours ago, which is crazy. I would thank Kevin Steele for his decades of experience and uh, one year of dedicated work performance at the University of Miami tomorrow if we call Jim Leonard, who is not returning to Wisconsin, and they're like, yo, come down here run our defense for a year or two, and you'll get that head coaching job that you want. Unfortunately for him, somewhere that's not Madison, Wisconsin, for a Wisconsin native. But, hey, Jim Leonard, you want to come down here and run this defense? He says yes. Hey, Kevin, you want to come down the hallway to my office right quick? I mean, like, I would definitely take that. Um, but, yeah, you know, it's – for me, it's not necessarily the name. It's really the scheme that underlies it and the ability to make it happen. So – um, yeah, I mean, if they, if they remain, if the coordinators remain, the case is number one continuity and that an improved roster would improve the performance overall of running the scheme that they want to employ. However, you have to have that work product. You have to get those results early on, but in the first half of next year, or you're gone period in terms of specific on Gaddis, there's been a lot of talk, a lot, depending on who you listen to. You know, he's not in recruiting pictures because he's not on the trail right now. Uh, according to who you listen to, he may or may not have interviewed for other jobs. According to who you listen to, he's coming back totally and he's just, you know, whatever they're going through, the end of year process that they always go through. It could go any number of ways. My gut, my gut feeling is that he go is he he's not the offensive coordinator next year. That's my gut feeling. And I could very well be wrong. But regardless of if they stay into next year or whatever, either both coordinators, the demonstrable performance has to be different next year. It just does. Tim. Tim's our USC guy. He wants a Jim Leonard bad. Apparently, do, 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 do. yeah, they got the best fight song in America. Oh my god, it sounds like Trojans. It just, I'm from the build up and everything. Like it just, ah, uh, it's the best fight song in America. It honestly is. Oh, the counter melodies and all everything in there. Like it, yeah. I I love the USC fight song. I really, really, honestly do. I don't agree that Tim or Jim Leonard is going to go out there. He's going to come down to Miami instead. But, uh. Hey, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. So in evaluating Gaddis in particular, this could go for any offensive coordinator. We'll stick on that side of the ball. You know, when you're watching the games week after week after week, knowing the roster, the personnel, generally having a pretty good idea based on how long that particular player's played at the school, what their capabilities are or are not, how much do you feel comfortable making an evaluation after let's say three or four or five games on how much of the lack of production is to lay at the feet of the OC as a play caller schemer versus lack of execution? 
or lack of talent. I mean, I think I feel comfortable because, like, if you can't scheme success, then what are we doing? You know, I mean, not even in in small small ways. You know, there's no, you know, Rhett Lashley had, and Rhett Lashley was not a perfect offensive coordinator at all, at all. But if they if teams wanted to give Miami free yards, took them. You know, how do you think that Charleston Rambo got all those catches and yards? You want to play off? Hut hut. Boom. You know, like if, if your heels are at 10 as a cornerback because you think that Charleston Rambo is going to run by you, that's going to be a one, two, three. I'm going to stop. I'm going to turn around. That rocket from Tyler Van Dyke is going to be there. I'm going to catch it. I'm going to turn it. I'm going to go upfield because you want to give us those yards. You're not fighting us about those yards. So we'll take those yards. Where were the free yard plays this year? Where were the easy rhythm throws that got any of the quarterbacks who played this year going? And there is some of, okay, maybe the core, you know, the, the receivers couldn't separate or they're like, yeah, but like you've got to have something that can get just free yards. Something that's nice and easy, you know, to get somebody started. Even Clemson with their offense, they schemed up some easy stuff for DJ in the beginning of the ACC championship game. Now, it's DJ's fault that DJ missed those, right? But, like, they they were free yards. They were easy, you know, we'll, you know, kind of we'll settle you down plays that they called and designed and ran on those first two drives. I watched every snap of that game. Trust me, all my group chats and everything were going crazy because I was letting them know I told you about going to the club level this whole damn season and Davo wasted a potential yeah. playoff chance for not doing it and playing DJ that entire damn South Carolina game. Y'all are stupid. It is not hard to see. I was right then and I am more right now and y'all going to listen to me be loud and right about this, God damn it, right? But even before they finally said, we're going to pull the plug on DJ, they got him free access plays, easy yards, easy throws for an offense that has major foundational schematic and structural issues at Clemson. Everybody's talking about this, right? Even they found ways to find those. But but Miami can't find any of those? With a quarterback who's better? Nothing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that we should be able to see the performance and production, excuse me, is better, you know, through four or five games next year. You know, we should see, you know, kind of like um, how Pittsburgh was in the finale against Miami. If we have games where we're only running nine or maybe 12, you know, like, like nine or 10 third down plays total, Oh, we're not even getting the third downs because we're converting on first and second. Maybe we're having explosive touchdowns and explosive plays. And I'm going to eventually revise that explosive plays piece from week three before we went to Texas A&M, where everybody said, you're too early. You don't know what you're talking about. It's a small sample size, and it means nothing. And I said at that time that the way that things were trending were portending impending doom. Right. That was Vesuvius that started making noise. And I said, hey, Vesuvius is making noise. Everybody here in Pompeii, Vesuvius is making noise. I say, uh, it doesn't mean anything. If you look it up, Vesuvius erupted and it overflowed and it decimated the city of Pompeii in Greece. Like it's a thing that happened. It's history. 79 AD, I think it was. Right. But I'm here saying I hear something from the volcano, bro. That's not good for us. And we said, nah, it's natural. It's normal. Don't. It's a Tuesday. Don't worry about it. It'll run its course. It has no impact on us in the future. Now that our offensive season has been consumed by hot lava, maybe now you will see that me screaming beforehand, something's wrong over there, was actually the case. 